Hello everyone, this is our lesson for multiplying rational expressions. And then next up after this, we have dividing rational expressions. And these two things are very closely related. So let's get started with multiplying first. As with the other two lessons that we've done in this unit, uh, the first thing that you need to do before you simplify or find excluded values is to factor the numerator and the denominator. So factoring has been a really big element in this uh, unit. So I'm going to flip back to page... 56 where we have these blank lines because I just want to take a minute to verify that everybody knows how to use Desmos to factor. So if you are feeling super confident with using Desmos to help you factor or you um, feel confident in your factoring skills, then you can fast forward this video probably five, five-ish minutes, maybe ten, um, and go straight to the lesson. But if you are unsure or you just want to make sure that you, you're doing things right, keep watching um, so that you can verify that you can use Desmos. So I'm going to go to Desmos. We um, always want to choose uh, math tools and graphing calculator. So whatever we're trying to factor, we're going to fill into this line here. Go back to my camera and I'll choose a trinomial for us to factor. So let's factor x squared minus 5x minus 14. This is going to factor into two binomials with an x at the, at the beginning of each binomial. So when I try to factor in this in decimals, I am going to plug that in. Sorry, let me adjust my decimals window. Okay, I'm going to plug that in right here in decimals. So I'm going to do x shift 6 squared minus 5x minus 14. Then I'm going to look at where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to highlight that for you in, let me try to do that in red, and then I'll change this other one to a different color. Okay, so you want to look at where this um, graph that you're getting from Desmos crosses the x-axis. Sorry, I have this backward. So the x-axis now has a red line through it, and then you can see the parabola that this expression makes um, in green. So down here, I'm going to highlight my x-intercepts. So I have x-intercepts of negative 2 and positive 7. When we write those down as factors, we need to make sure that we use the opposite number. So where you see a negative 2, we need to write positive 2. And where we see it crossing through at positive 7, we need to write negative 7. Whatever you see is the x-intercepts in decimals, you have to use the opposite. So let's try another. Let's try one that is the most commonly missed trinomial. The, the one, the trinomial that I see factored wrong the most is x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we will go back to Desmos. I'm just going to come in here and change my symbols. Plus 5x plus 6. And now, if I zoom in a little bit, I can see that my factors are a minus 3 and a minus 2. I shouldn't say factors, I apologize. My intercepts are a negative 3 and a negative 2. So on my note sheet, 
I should be putting a positive 2 and a positive 3. So remember, um, these two, if we multiply them out using double, double distribution, we will get this trinomial. We will get x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we're breaking it down into the two binomials that we multiplied together to get this guy. Okay, now let's do one that looks very similar. x squared plus 6x plus 5. So back to Desmos. I'm going to change this to a 6. I'm going to change this to a 5. And in this case, we are getting negative 5 and negative 1. So once again, we plug in the opposite. We are going to plug in a plus 5 and a plus 1. And your order does not matter. It doesn't matter which one you put first. Okay, let's try one that we see a lot. Let's do x squared minus 16. Remember, these are special binomials, but they're still going to factor to two binomials with x's on the front. So we go back to Desmos. I'm going to highlight the last two terms and just type in a minus 16. So now I have negative 4 and positive 4. So I come back to my binomials and one of them is plus 4, one of them is minus 4. So we've talked about factoring a lot this year. We've talked about using decimals to factor. It is a very important skill that you need to have, especially in this unit. So if you are confused on factoring still, maybe check with a neighbor or definitely talk to me. Um, either email me or talk to me in class so that I can just sit down with you and help you one-on-one -on -one, because it'll only take a minute or two. Okay, so back to what we are really here to work on, and that is multiplying rational expressions. Now, how we got to Desmos in factoring is because to uh, multiply any of these expressions, you must factor them first. You must factor the top and the bottom first. Then you will cancel out a lot of math teachers frequently say that. We say cancel out, but that's not really what we're doing. We're simplifying. They don't go to zero. They really go to one. So we're not technically canceling them out. We're going to um, cross out the factors that are in the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to go back to the very first lesson that we did in this unit where we talked about simplifying rational expressions. And if a binomial is in the top and the bottom, then we are going to simplify it out. So step number one, well, actually, when I do multiply, what I like to think about this as, when you have a um, multiplication symbol in between these, what we can really think about this as is one big long fraction. So I put parentheses around the around each numerator and denominator because what I'm going to do now is just make this fraction line one big long line because luckily when we multiply fractions that's the easiest thing to do with fractions so I'll show you that up here if we have like two fifths and we're going to multiply that by uh, let's go three sevenths to multiply that, all we have to do is multiply straight across. 
So this is really 2 times 3 over 5 times 7, which is 6 over 35. So when we multiply any fraction, all we have to do is multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. So we're just going to rewrite this as one big fraction. Now we have to factor this numerator here. This one is factored, factored, factored. So I'm going to go back over to Desmos and I'm going to plug in minus 3x minus 70. Now I'm going to have to hit this zoom out, this minus here, to get it to show me. And I'm going to highlight my x is negative 7 and x is 10. So when I come back to write this on my paper, what I need to write is a positive 7 and a positive 10. Then I just need to add on this other factor here. So on the end we have an x plus 6. So we factored this guy into two binomials. That turned into this, so maybe if I highlighted that, that'd be a little easier for you to see. And then this x plus 6 just goes on the end. Then in the bottom, we just have x plus 6 and x plus 7. We're just multiplying those two together. We're not actually going to double distribute them. We're just going to write them written as a multiplication. And now we can do our simplifying. So we have an x plus 7 in the top and the bottom, and x plus 6 in the top and the bottom. So what we have left in the top is x plus 10. What we have left in the bottom is 1 because we really didn't cancel anything out, we simplified. Well, hopefully you guys all know that this simplifies down to, or is best written as, x plus 10. You don't have to leave that one in the bottom. So now we're on to number two. It says number three, but really it's number two. And for this one, I just want us to ignore the 20, and we can even ignore this bottom, this 5x squared. So let's just pretend like those aren't there. So this time we have two things that, um, I shouldn't say two things, we have a numerator that we need to simplify and a denominator that we need to simplify. So I'm going to highlight this fraction line to remind myself that this just becomes one big long fraction. In fact, I'm going to write that big long fraction line here. And then I'm going to highlight the trinomials that I need to factor. I need... Okay, for some reason my um, doc viewer stopped recording. So uh, I believe I am where we left off. I just need to get my camera going again. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so um, I continued on doing this problem because I didn't realize that my, uh, my recording stopped. So I believe what I was saying before that happened was um, that we need to factor this trinomial in the top left we also need to factor the trinomial in the bottom right. Now I had you cross out that 20 and that 5x squared. I just changed that to a 1 as a placeholder for my fraction. So let me go over to Desmos now. And I need to type into this top sorry, to the line, minus 2x minus 24. That gives me x-intercepts 
of negative 4 and positive 6, so I need to change those to the opposite when I write those down as factors. So back to this page. I'm going to change x squared minus 2x minus 24 to x plus 4 x minus 6. So that was the trinomial. And then I need to include the x minus 10 from right here. Now I'm not really going to talk as I factor this next one because I want you guys to be following along and writing down what should go here without me telling you. So I'm going to do it on my screen. I'm just not going to narrate it. The one thing I will narrate though is that we don't need to put this one as our placeholder over here. We don't need to do that. We'll just factor out this and write them in our binomials. So I'll take us over to Desmos. I will highlight our x-intercepts. So you're probably looking at your paper. You guys write those down as what the factors would be. I'm going to go back over to the paper. And you guys verify that what you have written down is the same as what I have written down. And now we're to the point where we can simplify factors that are in the top and the bottom. These x plus 4s simplify, the x minus 10s simplify, and we have x minus 6 over 1. Just like in the last problem though, this is best written as or simplifies to just x minus 6. And you can include the parentheses if you would like, but they are not required. So before we get into this last problem, I just want to make a note really quick that this isn't always, um, this, these answers won't always just be one binomial. Sometimes your answer may look like x plus 5 over x minus 2 you will have uh, sometimes a factor in the top and the bottom. In fact, you might have two factors in the top and one in the bottom, like this. And if you get this, you would just leave it like that. You wouldn't multiply this back out. You could leave it in the factors, and you would plug that in as your answer. And you could even have two in the top and two in the bottom. So there's lots of different ways that your answer can look besides just one binomial. When you do this for your Canvas quiz, it's going to ask you to enter in the numerator and the denominator separately. So it's going to say N for numerator, you would just type in X plus 5. It's going to say D for denominator, or it might actually say the whole word, you'll type in X minus 2. Same here. If you get this, you would type in x plus 7 times x plus 3. Don't use any spaces. And then in the denominator box, you would just type in x minus 2. So just for your um, reference, they're not always just going to be one binomial. So I'm just label these example answers so that if I come back to this page, I know what I was writing down there. Okay, so we have one more problem before you guys go to try your quiz. Now, on this one, I like I said, my recording stopped, so I already highlighted what we were supposed to do. And the, the biggest thing that's different about this guy is that the second 
expression is not written as a fraction. It's just written as a trinomial. So to help ourselves out, we're going to make it look like a fraction by writing the fraction line and a one placeholder underneath it. So now we are, it looks like we are multiplying two um, fractions together. So now I have highlighted what you need to factor. I don't know why I highlighted this x plus 5. Deli was barking, so I probably was feeling very distracted. So this x plus 5 doesn't need to be factored. We can just move it over. We do need to factor x squared plus 2x plus 1, and we need to factor x squared minus 1. So I actually want you guys to pause the um, recording, and I want you to go over to Desmos and pull these factors so that you can verify you know what you're doing. So I'm not even going to go over to Desmos for this problem. I'm just going to write in the factors. So I want you guys to use this as an opportunity to verify that you, um, you can use Desmos to factor these. Okay, hopefully you're back. My... I think I lied to you a little bit because I think I'm going to have to go to Desmos to, to show you how to do this one. This bottom one hopefully was easy for you. He just factors to a plus one and a minus one. But here I wrote two binomials for you. I set it up before I had you guys go over and try it. So I have our binomials set up. And if I go over to Desmos and I plug this in, a plus 2x and a plus 1. I come to my parabola and all I have as a factor is a minus 1. But, but I wrote two binomials for you. So what is happening here? Well, what's happening is that this um, x-intercept has a duplicate or has a multiplicity. So this is actually multiplicity 2. If you get a fraction like you're seeing on this page and you know that it is supposed to factor into two binomials, which we know because everything that we have factored has been factored that way into two binomials, what that tells you is you're going to use whatever Desmos shows you twice. So what we should have here is a plus 1 and a plus 1. We use that same factor twice, x plus 1, x plus 1. And now we can do simplifying. So it looks like the x plus 1 in the top and the x plus 1 in the bottom are the only things that end up simplifying. So when we rewrite this as our final answer, we're going to have x plus 5 times x plus 1 over x minus 1. And we don't need to multiply this back out. We can just leave it exactly like this, just like I said on that previous page. If you're doing this in Canvas, it's going to ask you to enter in the numerator and the denominator separately. So you would type this in with the parentheses and everything exactly like you see it with no spaces for the numerator. And then for the denominator, you could plug in x minus 1 or you could plug in parentheses x minus 1 parentheses. So that is it for multiplying rational expressions. And multiplying and dividing rational expressions are so similar that the next lesson is probably going to be super quick because to divide rational expressions, you just turn them into a multiply. So that's where we are going next. Go do your Canvas quiz now. It's 5-3, so now you're going to do your Canvas quiz.